still plenty to come on tonight's Look East. We'll be a new pedestrian crossing on a busy road in Essex will have to be altered because it isn't wide enough for some vehicles. It's on the A120 at Bradwell, one of the main links to the M11. The design was agreed by the local authorities, but now it's going to have to be removed. This is the crossing that's causing the problems. It's on a busy road and cost around £150,000. Some want it removed, other villagers say it's a lifeline. It's, it's Chris Weir's road to hell. I have a friend who's in a m mobility wheelchair. He got hit on this crossing a few years back. What is he to do? What is he to do? You're, you're playing road poker here with people's lives. But for local farmers Peter and Andrew Fairs, it's a big problem. Trying to squeeze a three metre wide agricultural vehicle through the gap is impossible. We're going to end up with a bottleneck of traffic um, getting stuck in, the, in this junction or in, this, in these traffic lights. And, and it's been designed, to be honest, um, without the thought of the local users um, who use the road on a regular basis. And they say there isn't a good alternative route. Well, our obvious concern is that how are we going to be able to carry on our business if we can't move our machinery from, from one farm to the other? Well, we can't afford to buy another machine. So now the Highways Agency have agreed to remove the Central Islands. In a statement, they say the width restriction at the crossing caused by the Central Islands meant that some vehicles chose to mount the pavement. After new signals were installed, they could no longer do so. Following discussions with the police and the parish council, the Highways Agency have agreed to remove the Central Traffic Island. The lights on the crossing don't yet work and it looks like they could be removed before they're even turned on. Felicity Simper, BBC Look East, Bradwell. The Bird's Eye factory in Lowestoft was evacuate, evacuated today after part of the roof caught fire. Crews from Suffolk and Norfolk were called in at midday and the fire was put out by two o'clock. All the staff had to leave the building. Crown Street car park in Ipswich will stay closed until a report from structural engineers is published. The car park was closed last week and Ipswich Council says it's putting public safety first. A decision on whether it can reopen will be made next week. The council in Colchester is to clamp down on rowdy and drunken behaviour in the town's cemetery. It also wants to stop mourners turning parts of the cemetery into what it says is a fairground. This is the family area at Colchester Cemetery. A number of the trees have wind chimes in them. There are solar lights and teddy bears. And when the local council asked grave owners what they wanted, the majority said this wasn't it. The problem is it's just becoming over the top. It's too much in the way of wind chimes, windmills, ribbons and streamers, on, not only on grave spaces but on, on the trees and benches that surround the graves. And we did a public consultation and very much the majority have come back to say we need to tone it down because we want it to look like a cemetery rather than a fairground. Father Peter Walker is the rector of St James's Church in Colchester. He's conducted funerals in the cemetery. People are struggling now to know how to grieve and how to mourn. And I think as people have drifted from the church, they have um, it's created a vacuum for them, which they're now struggling to fill in an appropriate way. And the church is always there for them, but people need to be reminded of that and to come back to the church to fill that void. Mourners have had to endure antisocial behaviour in the cemetery, People stripped to the waist, drinking alcohol and playing football. The council says it will clamp down with extra patrols. For personal effects, mourners will be asked to keep them to graves only and people will have until the spring to remove the wind chimes. Mike Liggins, BBC Look East, Colchester. 500 people have been caught driving dangerously on the M11 in the last two days. Essex police are carrying out a week-long operation on the motorway to improve road safety. The county has the highest number of road deaths and serious injuries in the UK. Tourist businesses in the region say they're optimistic about the future, with almost two-thirds predicting growth next year. Today, East of England Tourism, the body which helps local businesses, announced it would be investing £800,000 over the next three years to boost the region. More than 180,000 people work in tourism here. Half a million pounds and a top film director are on their way to Suffolk to make a movie for the 2012 Olympics. It's one of a dozen projects across the country which got funding today. The film will focus on Langar Point at Felixstowe. 
Packed in among the pastries on the south bank, the artists who pitched ideas to celebrate the cultural Olympiad wait to see who gets the vote and who gets the money. Among them, Suffolk-born director Robert Pasiti with his project based on Landguard. For the East Region, on Landguard Point, the Pasiti Theatre Company. The guests, among them Lord Coe, the chair of London 2012, watched a promotional film about the vision to involve people across a wide area. In the north, in Norwich, a disused street will be taken over as a stage and film set. We're going to fly flags along the coastline here, signalling a welcome to the world. It's a series of large-scale outdoor events that will invite thousands of people to participate uh, with the composer Michael Nyman, a choreographer Wayne McGregor, all sorts of local communities and, and after a year and a half of live events everything will become a feature film. Much of the focus will fall on the historic fort at Landguard used by the military for more than 400 years and where in 1667 a Dutch invasion was thwarted. It's anticipation that we'll actually be drawing in larger numbers that we can show the place off to. And not just the fort of course, it's the whole of the, of the area will benefit from this. They'll be working in partnership with a range of other groups to make it happen. As for casting, the aim is clear. It's local people who will be the stars of the show. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East, on Landguard Point. You're watching Look East from the BBC. Coming up... Uh... The red squirrel population in this region was wiped out more than 20 years ago, but now... They're making a comeback, thanks to a special breeding programme. 27 squirrel kittens, I didn't know they were called that, were born in East Anglia in 2009, and eight squirrels have been released into the wild from the Pensthorpe Reserve in Norfolk. This is Victoria. She likes nuts, more nuts, and her mate Victor. Victor likes staying at home. You can only see red squirrels like these two in captivity in East Anglia. They were last seen in the wild here in 1979. Well, it's entirely down to the grey squirrel. Uh, the main reason is that it's passed on a pox virus to the red squirrel and it just decimates the red squirrel completely. David's tried to conserve red squirrels since the 1960s, in recent years to great success. Last year, 18 kittens were born. This year, that increased to 27. And there's now 10 places in our region where squirrels are bred before they're brought to Pensthorpe. I've been passionate about them since 1940. I mean, the fact that they're disappearing is um, a real tragedy and uh, we're trying in some small way to reverse that, or at least to, to keep them... To preserve them. In April, Pensthorpe opened new enclosures. The wardens now have time to pair up the squirrels, microchip them and do vet checks before their release into the wild. Because at 16 weeks, the squirrels uh, generally would move, up, move away from their parents. So when you've had a, a litter, mum starts pushing them out, so it's time to move on. And with this sort of facility, we can open up one of the, one of the overhead runs and away they go. They can be really fit and healthy and, and big before they get moved on for release. Eight squirrels left Pensorp for Anglesey last week where the greys can't get near them. But Victoria's not going anywhere. She's too friendly and too trusting most of the time. And Janet Gadgill, BBC Look East, Norfolk. <laughs> And, of course, that reminds us to tell you about Autumn Watch. Uh, they're back, the team, Friday at 9 on BBC Two. And if you want to know more about what they're doing, there's an interview with Chris Packham and with Kate Humble online at bbc.co.uk slash Norfolk. He's a Hollywood A-lister used to the red carpet and rubbing shoulders with a glitterati. So it seems... Hasn't been in here yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems slightly unlikely that Patrick Stewart, in case...